In this video, I'm tearing apart a Briggs & Stratton EXI Mo and Stow engine that failed under normal use due to a manufacturing defect. The backstory is this came into my shop knocking and smoking and leaking oil. And we will see what the failure was or the cause of failure. And this time it wasn't due to lack of lubrication. So to start off with, we're going to take the recoil off with the 8mm, and this is a complete teardown. Everything on this motor is being taken off and torn down. Now we're going to take off the carburetor and fuel tank. I'm going to leave it as one assembly. It makes a lot less mess that way. It's a 7mm and an 8mm that holds the air on. Alright, then we're going to take the clamps off. Right, and I'm going to use a tool here, which is a uh, gasoline disconnection tool. It's a very expensive tool that most people are going to have later on. And at first, I was going to take this off as one whole unit, but I decided not to. Because I knew this gas tank would be difficult to take off. Sometimes these tanks can be easy, and sometimes they can be hard. A lot of people don't like these new Briggs EX series push motors, but I've seen very few fail. And the plastic carburetors, you don't have to worry about them corroding or anything. It's just one jet in the same that is used in this one. Now we are moving on to the muffler because it's big and in the way. I don't remember exactly what size bolts had the muffler on. I believe it was an 8mm. Uh, everything on this motor is metric. That looks like a 7mm, so it was a 7mm. And then the actual muffler bolts that hold it onto the motor are 8mm. And one thing I like about these motors, no exhaust gasket, none whatsoever. See that? No exhaust gasket. It fits in there with a perfect seal. And now we are going to take the head off. What I was doing there is rotating the engine to top dead center so both valves would be closed. And it's an 8 millimeter to take the valve cover off. Yes, I could have just left it on there, but it's a lot easier with all this little stuff off. Three bolts. And there's our valves. You can see the rocker arms and the valve springs. Now I'm taking the head off, which is a 13 millimeter. And the head just pops right off, just like that. And then with the push rods. And you never want to see oil on top of the piston. That is a really bad sign. You see there that piston is rocking back and forth, which indicates that the rings have worn out. And mind you, this motor is just a couple months old. You see that piston just moving side to side, up and down. And what that does when the rings wear out, it ruins the cylinder. So, I'm going to flip this motor upside down and pull the oil pan off of it. And see what damage lies inside because it's pretty interesting. Alright, now we are going to see what the inside of this motor looks like. And like I said many times, it's pretty interesting on how this motor failed. So we're going to get the pan off, or whatever you want to call it. I call it an oil pan. This is 
four screws. Now mind you, this motor is a couple months old and the uh, crankshaft is not rusty yet. So I got a hammer and I need to separate the pan from the block in that way. And it will slide right up. You can see the gasket, you can see the camshaft. Which yes, it is nylon, but even the old Pulsar jets from the 90s had nylon cams in them. Here's that little slinger. I'm going to rotate the crankshaft in order to pull the uh, camshaft out. But sometimes they can be aggravating to take out. I believe I had to use a pair of pliers to get it out because the timing works won't line up. And out comes the camshaft. And that's when I see something pretty interesting. So now it's time to remove the connecting rod from the crankshaft. Now, that bolt was extremely tight. That bolt oh, was very loose. So that's one problem right there, is one of the rod bolts was over tightened and the other one was pretty loose. They're supposed to be torqued to 100 inch pounds in a half step increments. 50 pounds, 50 pounds, and 100 pounds. And these are rod bolts are not the easiest thing to take out because they have that uh, red thread lock on them or whatever it's called and once you take the two screws out or bolts or whatever you want to call them the uh, rod cap just separates from the uh, crankshaft journal and we're about to see something that usually happens from no oil or lack of oil but mind you this motor was using oil or burning oil and you can see how scored up that uh, rod cap was so what caused the rod cap to get scored and what caused the aluminum transfer on the crankshaft we will see momentarily once I knock this piston out which uh, I didn't want to come out easy. There's the whole piston. And the sides of the piston are severely scored. But this is when I see something interesting. So here's what I found interesting. This is the top of the motor where the arrow is pointing. It says damage. Um, that's from the crankshaft hitting the aluminum block and we'll soon find out why in the next picture like I said this was a manufacturing defect and this was not caused by putting no oil in the motor here's a close-up of the rod cap you see it is scored heavily and there were pretty deep score marks and that caused aluminum transfer onto the crankshaft and this is normally again caused by lack of lubrication but in this case it was not and the next two pictures will be of the sides of the piston and then after that we will determine the cause of failure so here is one side of the piston and you can see it is extremely scored and usually that's due to abrasives in the motor in this case it was not which we will soon find out the cause and here's the other side of the piston which was not that bad so what caused this engine to fail well we're about to find out here is a picture of the crankshaft journal now there is a little bit of aluminum transfer I mean it's just very little you could feel it with your fingers 
So if the crankshaft journal is basically in pristine condition with a little bit of aluminum transfer, what caused all the damage? This is the cylinder which caused the damage to the motor and caused it to fail. The cylinder was not bored correctly in manufacturing and damage resulted due to the coating that's in some of these cylinders. This does not have a cast iron sleeve, but as you see there is severe damage to the cylinder which caused the failure. Here's one last picture of the cylinder, and as you can see, the damage was about midway through the motor. And this was an interesting failure because when an engine comes in that's smoking and knocking and burning oil, the first guess on what's wrong with it before technical evaluation is lack of lubrication, but remember, that's not always the cause of failure. With that, with that said, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please leave a like and feel free to leave a comment down below and there will be more videos like this in the near future. Thank you.